If you want to learn more about Chicago, all you have to do is study the community of Uptown. Our first year seminar course at Columbia College Chicago created this documentary to learn more about this vibrant neighborhood. We questioned, we explored, we evaluated assertions. Bottom line, we found Uptown to be a community of culturally diverse people full of idealistic dreamers and nitty gritty residents who aren't afraid to say what they think is best for their community. It's also host to internationally known entertainment venues for all audiences. In short, it's a microcosm of Chicago. Uptown is a Chicago neighborhood bounded by Lake Michigan on the east, the streets of Ravenwood and Clark on the west, Foster on the north, and Montrose and Irving Park on the south. How would residents of the neighborhood describe Uptown? This is the question we asked an employee at Forget Me Not, a small boutique in the neighborhood. Diverse. Yeah, I mean, this is the old, like, what, like the only north side lakefront property or a neighborhood that has such a diverse group of people living it. Like, it goes all the way from the bottom to, like, up to the top. That doesn't, you don't really see that anywhere else. And we've got so many things close to us, like the Argyle, all of, like, the Vietnamese food and stuff like that. Just a really diverse cultural population and economic population. Uptown is an old neighborhood facing many new changes. One of the 77 community zones of Chicago, the area has been growing since the late 19th century. In recent years, urban developers have been looking at Uptown as the site for new luxury housing. At $900 or more per unit, these apartments are hardly considered affordable for some. So I'm not too happy with a lot of the new changes where they're bringing in um, the expensive apartments and condos. It's, uh, I don't think I don't know, I just, I just think it's sad. They're losing a lot of the character of the neighborhood. One concern for residents is that affordable housing and SROs, or single room occupancies, will be pushed out of the neighborhood with the rise of new condos. Patty Nakai is a Shin Buddhist priest at the Buddhist Temple of Chicago in Uptown and has seen many changes. One of my biggest concerns is the loss of uh, affordable housing. And one thing about affordable housing, as you guys know, is it brings young people into the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Young people who are open to new ideas and exploring life. Uh, so we have those kind of people coming to our temple, you know, living in those affordable housing apartments. And they're just about gone. You know, there's everything's turning condo. And it is a nice location, a convenient location. So I could see developers are interested. And um, it's just sad to see um, people being pushed out. But while some residents are dissatisfied with the new buildings, the Uptown United President, Alyssa Berman Cutler, says stopping investment altogether isn't the answer. I think it's problematic that as a city we don't have a plan for how we're going to house the, the very poor and the disabled. Um, so the people who um, were living in, especially some of these buildings in the SROs, are paying um, $200, $300 a month for their housing. They're living on Social Security disabilities. They're, make, they're bringing in $669 a month. Um, we don't have a good alternative place for these people to live. Um, the problem is that these buildings were so terrible that people were really not in a good situation. Um, so the long-term plan shouldn't just be, let's just keep these going how they're going. Um, there has to be a plan citywide to get more housing built for people who, um, who need very, very affordable housing. Some residents try to remain optimistic about the changes. Well, I'm excited to see how it turns out. I'm afraid to see prices rise because I really like my apartment, but yeah. I think it's as developers build condos to bring new residents in, some people in Uptown struggle to find a home at all. Pam Williams, who works for the homeless shelter Cornerstone Community Outreach, found herself without a home and living at the shelter years after she was an employee there. My mother had passed away and they sold her house. And so I ended up here um, again, but this time as a, as a client. This place has been here for probably 30 something years. Um, from what I've been told, a lot of homeless shelters have closed down because of the economy. Um, so, but we are one of the few that is still here. Fortunately, places like Cornerstone Community Outreach exist to help those in the neighborhood who found themselves without the basic human need of a place to call home. Jeremy Nichols is the director of the men's program. There's certain people who are homeless who just need a bed for a couple of days, right? Because yeah. they 
they um, they lost their job and it's a bit of a transition and it might be a couple of weeks, a month or something like that. Then there's people who really, they might have a learning disability, they might have a mental illness. Or, and so to really help them out, in, uh, they need to be guided. Yeah. It's, it's almost like a maze in Chicago, right? With the new housing options, new businesses are moving in. The investment of a Target and a Sonic in the area seems to have brought positive changes, according to some residents. A Smoke Dreams employee who didn't want to appear on camera says he's also witnessed the changes. I was working here um, like maybe a year or so before they opened the Target. And once they opened up the Target, I saw a lot more people walking by, like... Just especially on the weekends, you just see more droves of people walking past the window. Mm -hmm. So that target is definitely something that has brought a lot of people to Uptown, make it sort of more of a destination location. We got a Sonic now over there. That's pretty great. I don't know. I mean, we get some Sonic workers, of course, that come in, which is cool. Yeah. New businesses in the area offer new job opportunities in a time where the unemployment rate in Uptown is over 10%. The Uptown Chamber of Commerce works closely with these businesses. Keith McCormick is the director. We recently, we got the first Sonic uh, opened up last year in Uptown. Uh, it's the first one in an urban setting. Usually Sonics are, you know, really only located in, in the suburbs. Yeah. Um, but this is the first one that's ever been in a major metropolitan area. Wow. And they hired most of their staff from people who live in Uptown. Uptown. Not only have new businesses affected employment, but also the kind of people moving into the neighborhood. The managers of Target have told me, you know, when we opened this store, we were selling a lot of like single living type things like dorm room furniture and, you know, electronics and books and things like that. And then over the last couple of years, they've seen an increase in sales of maternity clothes and strollers and wow. diapers and now this year they're seeing a boost in toy sales so what does that tell you it's either people are coming into this neighborhood and you know shopping at that target for their families or families in the neighborhood are shopping at target and there's growing families and i think that that's probably the case business and housing aren't the only things receiving attention in uptown the area has also experienced a revamp of its historical and internationally renowned entertainment district. I mean, people still see Uptown as a great theater music venue district. We've got great venues like the Aragon, the Riv, the Green Mill, the Fat Cat, uh, Uptown Lounge, all of these places. Now we have the Uptown Underground Theater uh, opening, which is uh, kind of a throwback burlesque theater. Oh, wow. Uh, that is opening up in a... Uh, historical building used to be owned by Al Capone. So it's in Al Capone's actual, um, it's one of his old speakeasies. It's wow. in the basement. Wow. Uh, and, and yeah, and I mean, it's like 100 yards from my office. So it's pretty cool. You know, and there's a lot of theaters opening up, a lot of music venues. Aldermanic candidate Denise Davis knows the history behind the famous Green Mill. The Green Mill true story. The Green Mill apparently is, is where Al Capone and them hung out, right? And they, they would go underground with these tunnels to get away from the feds, right? So my sister came to visit and we were walking, being silly like sisters, you know, and I said, she says, well, let's go have a cocktail. I said, okay, let's, you know, we were walking. I said, let's go on the Green Mill. I said, I could tell you the history about it because they have the same curtains and drapes. Everything is basically the same when it we looked back in the 20s, 1920s. And so I told her, I said, yeah, there's supposed to be an underground tunnel in here. At that moment, and we're sitting at the bar, the floor rolls up. I, I, I'm like, what the hell? The floor, <laughs> the floor rolls up. And yes, it was a tunnel. Where they, you can go down, but now they use it to store their liquor and stuff. How cool is that? Music venues, burlesque shows, ethnic food, and theaters, including the Black Ensemble Theater, 
All of these exciting entertainment options, both old and new, exist in the heart of Uptown. How do residents contribute to the artistic environment of the community? They're spending, I went to the meeting, they're spending like gobs of money for some, I think they said British artists to install some fancy artwork when there's some need to have art programs here in this neighborhood for the young people. So that's what somebody brought that up. Why didn't they use that money for that kind of thing? However, there is in fact a very unique art program right here in Uptown for young people. It's called the People's Music School. Renee Davis is the development manager. We are, to our knowledge, the only completely tuition-free music school in the country. And so there are no other music schools in Uptown, um, certainly none that are free. The People's Music School chooses its students by lottery and has steadily developed over time. Our founder, Rita Simo, she started the organization in Uptown in 1976, and she wanted to provide free music education for, for kids. Mm -hmm. So she rented an old hair salon, and she only had $625 and she got a donated piano from a church. She wheeled the piano down and put up a sign in the window saying free piano lessons and that's how the People's Music School started. Uptown is an incredibly diverse neighborhood so we have students from all different ethnicities and um, different nationalities. Um, so yeah, we, we serve a very diverse population of students. Art and entertainment here in Uptown bring both insiders and outsiders to the stage. And the entertainment district offers not only culture, but revenue. It's fun to bring, you know, talent into the community and, and you can just walk down the streets. You don't have to go down to Chicago Theater downtown. And it's, it's the still state-of-the-art shows that you see. I mean, you know, and it's, you know, money-making, it's jobs, it's, you know, and you can see stars. We have the um, Riviera Theater, the Aragon Ballroom, and the Green Mill, which are amazing anchors right around this intersection of Lawrence and Broadway that bring thousands of people for concerts, everything from, you know, the 4,000 person Aragon with big rock shows to the um, much more intimate Green Mill, which is internationally renowned. Um, what we'd like to see is more venues that support that sort of action, um, where people could say on a Saturday night, you know what, I'm bored, let's just go to Uptown because there's always something happening there. With growing entertainment options, Uptown certainly has a bright future. The diversity in the area is one reason that this neighborhood is so alluring. We're eclectic. I love that word. <laughs> We're like potpourri. We have all colors, all races, all religions. Um, culturally, we can, we can grow and feed off each other. I've learned so much off people who maybe are Russian descent or uh, uh, Ethiopian descent or, you know, Native American. You know, I, I, I've learned so much. You know, my children have friends who are every color in the rainbow. You know, um, they have very, very rich friends. They have very, very poor friends and everything in between. They're friends. And the beauty to me about you guys, um, y'all don't care about any of that. You guys, young people, a lot of young people nowadays, they don't care, you know, you're my friend, you're my friend. They don't have that, you know, um, uh, racist or, you know, I've been told to stay away from this person or I've been told to, you know, they, you guys are just, you guys just love on each other. All, and I like that. And I wish that people my age would be able to let it go and do the same. So I think young people are going to save what we're going through now. The younger generation seems to have the right attitude and strength to help this neighborhood get onto its feet again, but will they have the financial means? The current economy is one that many people are struggling with, but Cornerstone Community Outreach is doing what it can to help. The, the economy, it's hard to, it's hard for people to get jobs, yeah, and so it takes a long time for people to, if they have a disability, to, and that's part of something that we're trying to do as, in casework as well, is to try and get people from um, who might have a disability to get onto SSI so they have an income and to find the right housing and support system that works, you know.
um, Uptown was originally built um, as a place where especially younger adults um, were coming, you know, having their first place in the city, um, working really hard and coming back to these little rooms, um, but being outside of their homes most of the time, using the entertainment venues, the restaurants, being on the street. Um, and I think that's what it's going to be more of again. Uptown is going through changes that will deeply affect the area. New businesses are coming in, providing additional jobs, and established businesses and restaurants aren't going anywhere. Politicians and other community leaders are working on plans to keep housing affordable as new condos surface. But even more than the houses and the shops, it's the people of Uptown who make it the vibrant place that it is.